Hi everybody, I want to say a few words about the Curiosity Cabinet that is your final project um, for this course instead of a final exam. Um, it's due, as you all know, on August 1st by um, my time, Eastern Time, midnight. Um, and Elizabeth, you have an extra three hours uh, being as you are um, on the West Coast. Um, so I've received so far two installments, two drafts of your final project, and all of you receive detailed comments and suggestions from me. And I'm very much looking forward to see um, the final versions of your curiosity cabinet. I want to say a few words that will talk about the bigger picture of this project, because I think it might help you to complete uh, your curiosity cabinet. The rationale, first of all, is that it's really a creative kind of assignment. Um, I'm not asking you to memorize anything. I'm not asking you really to repeat uh, what other people said, to repeat anything that I said in my lectures, this course. It's really creative and individual in the sense that you choose your own items. You choose the items that go into this curiosity cabinet and you choose what you're going to say about each item and how you're gonna, going to present it. So it's really a very creative, individualistic kind of final assignment. In addition, it's also a really good culminating exercise of, um, of research, academic research skills. Um, throughout this course, you've been asked to hone in your research skills. Um, you had a weekly uh, mini research assignment. You also needed to know how to do research in order to answer the questions of the uh, textual analysis that you had to do every Wednesday. And the Curiosity Cabinet is really the culmination of helping you to develop your academic research skills. Again, the emphasis is on your active res research skills instead of memorizing information. Um, and then probably the last point that I want to make is that uh, by creating this curiosity cabinet, you are really providing your own narrative of history, your own understanding, your own version of what the history of the time period that this course covers is really like. Because just like the curiosity cabinets that you've read about from the 16th to the 18th century in which uh, people collected these items and it really um, presented their perception of the cosmos, of what the world is like, what's important in it, in a similar way your choice of items would tell the viewers, me and other people who might view your curiosity cabinet, would tell us what is your version of what is important in European history? What is your understanding of what's significant, what should be emphasized, how should we tell the story that is the history of European history? And it's no accident that uh, no two students chose the same item. Uh, even once for a curiosity cabinet, and it's because you have very different tastes and very different understandings of what is of significance, of what is important uh, in the time period, the very vast time period that's, that this course covers. So these are just a few words um, to kind of give you the framework for this final assignment. Um, I'm very much looking forward to seeing your final versions. As always, please don't hesitate to email me with questions, and I promise to answer within 24 hours unless it's over the weekend. Okay, take care, good luck, and have fun.